Uh, we're going to be looking at car lift safety. Four post and two post uh, are most popular car lifts. Lift safety is going to be the title of this video. Uh, watch the whole thing because you may learn something that uh, could save you a lot of grief. Okay, we're looking at a two post lift first. Uh, this is one of our more popular lifts. It's a two post 9,000 pound capacity. Uh, but basically all of your two post lifts uh, are going to be about the same. On um, this one it uses the asymmetrical design which means the long arm in the back, short arm in the front. Uh, the first thing we need to take a look at is when you're pulling the arm out you'll notice there's a spline here and a spline here. As you raise the lift, uh, those two splines will come in contact and prevent you from moving the arms while you're on the lift. So you want to make sure that those splines are connected as you lift the lift. And I'm going to pretend we're ready and I'm going to lift this up and you'll see how it catches in there as it raises up. Now what you heard there was the first safety latch to prevent the lift from coming down should a cylinder fail. And now we'll take a close up look at this spline. And you can see, you want to make sure that that is connected in there. Teeth to teeth, high to low. That way the arm won't twist and turn as you're working on the car that's on the lift. That'll lock it into position. As you raise the lift, that locks in. As you lower the lift, it unlocks. All four of those are the same. Now as we continue to raise the lift, you'll hear the safety latch catch in. And it's in the back of the frame. You can see it back here in the corner. This little ladder. This right here is where the latch, you'll hear it click. That's clicking in as your safety as you lift the vehicle. So I'm going to lift that and you can hear that click in. Now, You've heard it, uh, each time that clicks, the safety is getting into position, w will not allow the cylinder to, uh, will not allow the carriage to fail, fall, if the cylinder fails. Now, the proper way to do this, to raise this correctly, is to uh, push your button, and you'll hear the lift go up after you've heard the safety catch on both sides when you've achieved the height you're looking for then you will release this and the carriage will come down and rest on the very last stop that it just cleared. And now you're free to work on the vehicle. You want to make sure your arms are locked in and in the correct position and then you're ready to work on the vehicle. When you're done working on the vehicle you're going to raise the lift When you're done working on the vehicle, you're going to raise the lift up and pull out your safety latch on both sides. And now you're ready to lower the lift by pushing the red release lever. And remember, the heavier the vehicle is, the slower it's going to go up and the faster it's going to come down. When there's nothing on the lift, it's going to go down really slow. And now we're getting ready to uh, put our vehicle on there. Today we're going to be 
putting on a three-quarter ton Chevy four-door uh, short bed. So uh, I'll show you how we position the arms. All right, we've got our uh, three-quarter ton four-door uh, Chevy truck on the lift. One important thing to remember when you're putting a car on the lift, never lift a car higher than you need to do the job. Always, 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 the closer to the floor you are, the safer it's going to be. Remember, never raise the vehicle higher than you need to that is required to do the job. Uh, sometimes you have to pull forward, sometimes you have to pull back to make sure you get all of the uh, arms positioned correctly. On this particular vehicle we had to use the short uh, truck adapter on the front and notice where that is on the frame. We're slightly in back of the frame curve we're on a nice flat spot of the frame and it's secured in the it's placed right about in the middle of the width of the frame and now we'll take a look at the back arms same thing we're right where the frame starts to turn up uh, now sometimes on the vehicle uh, you'll have to position your your back uh, support a little bit further back. Uh, sometimes you'll place it on the spring perch or the spring, um, depending on what the length of the particular vehicle is. Uh, but on this vehicle, uh, right where the furthest spot back where the frame is still flat, it works pretty good on on this vehicle. And again, remember only raise the car the height you need to perform the task that you're doing. Uh, now we'll take a look at the uh, safety that I was talking about earlier. And you'll notice that the teeth of the gear are right in contact with each other. That prevents the arm from moving while you're uh, working on the vehicle. Because sometimes, as you know, you have to tug, pull, push uh, to get the part off. So you want to make sure all four of those are secured in place before you perform any task. And I've already raised the lift uh, to the past the safety. And then lowered it back down on the safety. Uh, we're at a good working height for front wheel bearing. So now we're going to go ahead and perform that task. One important factor to remember before you raise the vehicle. Uh, you want to lift the vehicle slightly off of the ground, maybe six inches to a foot, and go around to each corner and tug and push and pull to make sure the vehicle is balanced front to back, side to side. You'll go around to each corner, kind of hang on there, and you'll see the vehicle give a little bit, but if you notice there's way too much weight on the front or way too much on the back, lower it, reposition the vehicle. We already did that to this vehicle. I'm going to show you what you need to do. Now I'm going to go back and hit both back corners. Okay. Everything seems secure that way. Normally you'll do this when your tires are maybe six inches to a foot off the ground and then do it again when you get up to the working height. You always want to make sure the vehicle is safe and secure on there before you put any body part underneath there. So once, you're, uh, once you've confirmed that the vehicle is safely on there, raise it to the desired work height and no higher, and then you're ready to perform your task. All right, now we've completed our task on the lift. Now we're going to lower the lift. The first thing we're going to do is push our up button, raise it up off of our safety lock, pull out our safety latch on both sides on this unit. Some units have a latch on one side. This one has two, so you pull the safety on both sides, and now you're ready to lower the lift. 
Okay, we've released the safety. Now we're just going to push down on our release handle. And down it comes. Make sure before you lower the lift, you don't have tools, blocks of wood, a jack stand, something like that underneath of it. I have seen people uh, knock one off the lift because they forgot to remove their toolbox or jack stand underneath there. So verify there's nothing blocking you on your way down. Hit your release lever and down it comes. Once your arms, uh, your carriage has come uh, all the way to the bottom, that will release, release the uh, star catch that was on there. All right, now the lift is all the way down. Now we're going to pull the arms back. And we're going to remove our adapters. On uh, some extensions you'll use the short, some you'll use the long, sometimes I've even had to double stack them. Uh, put those back in their little carriage, their little holder, and there's the short one. Sometimes you use it without any, sometimes you double stack it. That arm's out of the way, now we're going to push the other arm out of the way, and once we do the other side, we're ready to back the car off the left. Next, we'll take a look at a four-post lift. Okay, now we're going to take a quick look at a four-post lift. Uh, a lot different than a two-post in that uh, most four-posts are not bolted to the ground. And uh, you don't have to really place the arms anywhere because you just drive up on the ramps. Uh, you're going to do a lot of the same things. But uh, on a four-post, it's a little easier. Basically, you're just driving a car on. Uh, raising it up to uh, get to the desired height, do what you need to do, let it back down. A lot of people use a four post lift for stacking also. We'll take a look at this in just a moment. Okay, before we start lifting the car on there, there's a few things we need to check. Number one, you're going to go around to each corner and verify that your cable is on your pulley. It's kind of hard to see with the camera, but uh, the cable comes down and goes through that pulley and goes through another couple pulleys and ends up at the cylinder underneath. But for right now, you're going to go each corner and verify that the cable is riding on that pulley and you don't have too much slack in your cable. Okay, once you've verified that, you're ready to pull your car on the lift and lift it up. You're going to check that at all four corners. All right, now we've got our car pulled on there. Uh, there's a stop in the front. You can run all the way up to that. And a lot of times, especially if you're running a manual transmission, you want to put one of the stops in the back. Uh, for right now, this vehicle, we're just using uh, one in the front. And we would like to say it's a standard shift or automatic shift. So we are just using the uh, automatic to lock it in place. And now we're going to raise the vehicle. On this particular lift, it's 110 volt, uh, which really doesn't make any difference, but we're going to hit our button here that's going to raise that. In a moment, you'll hear all of the safety locks click in. You should hear four different locks click in. They should be all be clicking at about the same time, uh, so listen carefully for those. And just like on a two-post lift, you want it to raise it above that catch and then lower it onto the safety lock latch before you start working on the vehicle. There again, never raise the vehicle any higher than what you have to to perform the task. Latches latch in, 
So now we're going to lower the vehicle onto the last stop. Once you've confirmed that it's all that it's on all four stops, let off the lever and then walk around and physically check that it's on all four stops. On this particular one, that's the front corner, and you'll see it's now resting on this block that's welded in here. That's your safety. Uh, you can go higher or lower, but for this particular task, we stopped right there. And you're going to go around and check all four of those to make sure they're all four latched in there. Same thing, sitting right on there. Okay, so now we're ready to perform the task, we're going to check that on all four, and then we're ready to do the job uh, on this particular car we're going to do. Now, after the job is done, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, raise the vehicle up off of the stop and pull the safety latch back. All right, now we've finished uh, the task we needed to perform on the car, and we're ready to lower the lift down. Uh, again, quickly uh, walk around the lift, make sure all the pulleys are, and the cables are still intact, uh, and make sure there's nothing under the vehicle, no jack stands, no toolbox, no block of wood, anything like that. And now you're going to raise the vehicle slightly and watch it come off of the safety. All right. Now you're going to pull the safety lever down on this particular unit and you can see all four. There's one on the far side and there's two in the back. You can kind of see them as I work the lever. Confirm all four of those are released and then let the lever down as you hold this lever and the lift will come on down. Now like I say make sure your safeties are out of the way on all four corners and as the lift clears the last safety block you can release the latch and down it comes and now you're ready to remove the car from the lift and that completes our short video on basic lift safety uh, we always put a cone at the back of the uh, ramps, so when you're uh, working on the car, you don't actually knock your head into there, because uh, it will hurt you if you do that. It's another little safety tip. Uh, and then a lot of times when we raise the lift, we will remove the ramps off the back so you don't hit your head on those. Once again, this is from Tools Plus, uh, car lift safety. Have any problems, any questions, give us a call. 937-339-6829. Thank you.